so far we've covered stuffed artichoke hearts, stuffed tomatoes, stuffed pumpkins, stuffed cabbage. Today we have some... There we go. Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. It's stuffed onions. Oh! <laughs> bon appétit. Okay, let's go back to Mastering the Art of French Cooking V2 today from Julia Child. And uh, yeah, I want to take a crack at this one. Onions stuffed with rice, cheese, and herbs. Onion farci au riz. Onions hollowed out and stuffed with rice and chopped cooked onion cores need only a little cheese, cream, and a pinch of herbs to point up their flavor. Served hot, they add a great distinction to a platter of broiled chicken or fish, roast, steak, chops, you can serve it cold with etc, etc. It's all food for thought, of course. I am just going to make the onions. That's it. Let's get to work. All right, so I have three large white onions. These are the biggest ones I can get. This is like four inches in diameter, same, three and a half inches. White onion or yellow onion, I'm, uh, well, it's clear. I'm gonna make three of these things, you know, just because I'm making a show here, I wanna make enough to show these suckers off. Julia, in her recipes, always assumes that there's at least six people in this place at all times. Recipes are always for six plus for three today, and that's probably still too much. But hey, we're making we're making uh, content. Shave off the pointed end and the root end of the onion. There's a diagram here, so in case I get lost, I know how to get home. Peel off the skin along with one layer of the flesh. Beautiful. Lovely. So with a sharp knife, I should mention that there's no onion hacks over here today besides a sharp knife. So if I weep, I weep. Cut cone-shaped core out of the top side of the onion. Cone shape. Bowl me. Thank you. Now we're gonna reserve the onion flesh. Use a grapefruit knife to dig circular sections out of the body of the onion. If you do not have a grapefruit knife, I'm just gonna use this knife. You know what? I'm gonna use a grapefruit spoon as well. Because I have one of those. So why don't we start with the knife. Again, I'm following the diagram, which makes this crystal clear. It says, being careful not to make the sides and the bottom too thin, they should be almost half an inch thick or four layers of onion. We've made it this far without tears, so. You know, I attribute all that to the stellar grapefruit spoon, you know? For the low, low price of like a buck or two. And you know, you can have grapefruit in the morning, stuffed onion in the evening. I just think life is good. Life is good. Okay, I've hollowed the sucker right the hell out. This, my friends, is a hollowed out onion, if I've ever seen one, which I have now. You gotta be careful with that core at the bottom because if you go too deep, you can cut that thing right out. Okay, so in my big kettle over here, I got some boiling salted water. Onions into the boiling water. Bobbing around, bob, bob, bob. Water's back up to a boil for 10 or 15 minutes. Now, while those onion cups are blanching, I gotta mince the onion flesh. Mince it, boy. A little to start, man. Bring the friggin' boiling water back over here. So after 10 to 15 minutes, these onion cups need to be, whoo! So these onion cups need to be tender when pierced. Check, totally. Take these out of the boiling water and drain them in a colander upside down. Like, oh yeah. Hot, that's great. That goes aside. I gotta reserve the boiling water for the next step. And that kind of confuses me, which I will get into in one hot minute here. So here's a saucepan. Okay, so I kind of have to make heads or tails of this next step because she's like, well, why don't you use all the water you just used to blanch those onion cups? It's just cooking up some rice. I was like, you want me to use all of that water? That was a Dutch oven full of it. So what I'm gonna do instead is cook up One cup of plain Jane rice, uh, raw white untreated rice in a saucepan. Why? Stupid is as stupid does. That's what my mother always told me. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna take two cups of this water, 
two to one. I'm gonna make up the rice the way I usually do. But I'm gonna cut the time short so that it is, so that the rice is almost, but not quite tender. So she says 10 to 12 minutes. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna take all the minced up onion flesh and I cook it in a frying pan with some melted butter. Cook the onion slowly until tender and translucent. Okay, I hope everyone's okay. I don't need all of this onion right now, so I'm just gonna remove some of it, save it for a rainy day. Uh, Cause she just says cook it all, but then you save a lot of it for something else in your life. Let's continue. I gotta cook that low and slow for around 10 to 12 minutes until it's tender and translucent. Lid goes on. Let's remove the cover, turn the heat up and brown these suckers very lightly. Keep it stirring. You need a bowl. Me, please. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is make the full recipe of the stuffing with only the three onions. I think that's a good idea just in case I need more stuffing than I think I need. So that goes in, that's a cup of the browned lightly onions. This is around one third cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Pay a quick visit to Jamie's garden here. I need around a quarter cup of parsley. So I'm gonna need to mince this up. A chiffonade, two tablespoons of basil. Well, chiffonade and then a mince. So it's time to add everything into my bowl. So I'm gonna start off with one third cup of the cooked, but not quite tender rice. Charlie, so let's just mix that first. One third cup of grated Parmesan cheese, as well as one quarter cup of creme fraiche. Yes, you have my attention. So with some homemade breadcrumbs of the not too fine variety, I made these ages ago, they still look good. Still good. <laughs> two tablespoons worth. If the mixture does not hold its shape, blend in more breadcrumbs. I think that's good. Two tablespoons of minced up basil, a quarter cup of minced parsley, a little salt and pepper to taste. Stir that together. That's all to taste, my friend. Yes. Oi! Flip a roux here. I bring over the onion cups that have drained and uh, they look pretty good to me for the most part. <laughs> now with a couple tablespoons of melted butter, I need to butter the outside of each onion cup. How much butter? Who cares? Well, a couple tablespoons, but honestly, who cares, right? In the interior, you wanna fill it up with just a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Just a little, man, just a little. Okay, so we need to fill these up and then a heaping half inch dome above as well. Good call with the full recipe of the filling because I used it all. I'll give them another coat of melted butter. Why the hell not, right? We're all gonna die eventually. What I'm gonna do next, you may not have to do this step, is uh, pretend like you didn't just add the onions onto this baking dish, because you need something like this that's just gonna hold them snug. You wanna add liquid into here. So, I mean, this is just too risky. Risky and incorrect and it's not gonna work. So in my new baking vessel, I'm going to cover it, cover it, coat it with a layer of butter on the inside. Onions go in, nice and snug, nice and snug. All right, so with some white wine, I'm gonna use whatever is left of this. That's around one, what is that? Around, uh, say around half a cup, Sauvignon Blanc. And the rest is gonna be beef stock and all of this has to come up around one third the side of the onion. Okay, that's good. No more than that. Sprinkle with around a teaspoon of breadcrumbs on top of each one of these. And of course, some melted butter on top. You decide. I think that's enough. <laughs> that, of course, can all be done before you add the liquid. I went out of order. Bring this to a simmer on the stove. 
once that's to a simmer, into the middle lower rack of the oven, 425 degrees. F, of course, not C, that would be way too damn hot. For around an hour to an hour and a quarter. Keep our eyes on it. It'll be finished when I can poke it with a knife easily, but do not overcook it. You want it to hold its shape. Also, there's some mention of a ball baster. Uh, Throughout baking, I'm gonna baste this thing a couple times worth. Take some of that liquid, pour it on just the sides of the onion cups. That's for me. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Some fresh parsley on the very top. A little boost of color. Order up. Let's do this. All right. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm actually stuffed. That thing was, uh, the stuffed onion made me stuffed. That filling is just a savory punch to the face in all the right ways. And the outside offers a bit of a subtle like kind of sweetness to it. Maybe that's because it was cooking in the wine as well, but whew, it's a great contrast and not too intense with the onion. It's kind of subdued. It's there, obviously, prominently. It's not as intense as I thought it was gonna be. Honestly, that was fantastic. Fully expecting to move it from the baking pan and like the bottom splits open or something terrible would happen. Similar to the stuffed pumpkin. Oh, we sprung a leak. No, 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 no. That didn't happen here, and I was fully expecting it to do that. So don't overbake them. They're gonna hold their shape, I guess, is the lesson. That is a show-off side dish if I've ever seen one. And honestly, pretty easy to make. So yeah, highly recommend. It's a great little thing. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir.